good to be here. Uh, I would like to uh, start with an introduction. I am a managing partner at 0101 today. It is a MarTech agency. We provide uh, MarTech solutions to uh, enterprises and brands, right from consulting to managed service around marketing technology. That is what we do at 0101 today. Previously, uh, I've been a, actually a product guy, building products, especially in zero to one categories. So that means uh, new categories, you know, which are in the market that has been my specialization. The la last product that I built uh, was a B2C product at Curiosity Gym, which was like a LinkedIn for students. Prior to that, I was an entrepreneur at Netcore building scoop.ai, which is a conversation analytics product, uh, which is what gave me a deep insight because the conversation analytics product worked primarily around uh, inside sales uh, conversations. So it gave me a good uh, deep insight about SaaS sales, inside sales, and that is the kind of uh, topic method that we are going to talk about today. Uh, prior to that, I was head of product at Netcore, where I build a marketing automation product. So yes, zero to one product person, learning uh, the SaaS sales in the last five years, what, what exactly is SaaS sales, uh, having built a product for inside sales team. So that is where my insights around and understanding around you know SaaS uh, sales and inside sales comes from. I would like to just start with, a, you know, kind of a quick understanding from the group because I'm not going to elaborate on what is SaaS because I think every uh, today people understand what is SaaS which is software as a service being offered across the globe through primarily through a browser uh, based or a mobile app based interface uh, but I think we are all aware there are many products like whether it is salesforce.com which was a pioneer in, uh, you know, in software as a service uh, to many other products today you know they are SaaS products so I'm not going to talk about SaaS uh, uh, but if a quick show of hands, you know, how many people in the room, uh, ha has anybody, you know, any understanding of what is SaaS sales? What is a SaaS business? Not software as a service. We know what is software as a service. But what is a SaaS business and how does it differ uh, from a traditional business, let's say? Uh, so and, and anybody wants to take a quick uh, shot at it in case people are aware about this? Miss SaaS is a uh, software as a service. The service here is provided on the basis of monthly subscriptions, right? So the main difference is uh, here the subscription based model, which uh, makes the SaaS difference. And second is, uh, thing is the whole module or the whole fundamental is basically on the web. You don't have to install anything. You are good to go. Just plug and play uh, type of stuff, right? Fantastic. Navin. So that is correct. So SaaS is essentially a web-based, nothing to install kind of a software. That is a SaaS product. Uh, as a business, it is, you know, primarily subscription driven. You know, most of the SaaS products, most, you know, are basically, they charge you, either they are free or freemium. And if they are freemium or paid, then they charge you a subscription fee for using their service. Okay. So uh, that's uh, pay for use and subscription based products. That's great. I think uh, good uh, to uh, get the definition out of the way. So what is SaaS sales? You know, you have to contrast it with traditional sales, right? So uh, typically, if you, if you look at it, customers buy, I'm talking about B2B customers, right? They traditionally buy uh, through a sales team, right? A sales team would kind of reach out to them. They would visit uh, the customer physically. Uh, then they would uh, do demos. Uh, the, the, there would be multiple rounds of meetings and there would be proposals and quotations shared. And there would be negotiations and then you would close a deal, right? That is what, let's say, a typical vendor or a product uh, company would do as uh, to sell their product. So they would hire field sales teams. They would be, you know, in touch with the customer, and they would do prospecting and then uh, meetings and then and closures. Right? That has been the traditional uh, sales uh, playbook, uh, and and it continues. There are many product uh, products which require field sales teams to kind of do this. That is how the traditional sales playbook is. Uh, but what is SaaS sales? SaaS sales, uh, you should also read a concept which is what is called as product-led sales. They are intertwined, you know, these the, the, the concept. So, you know, uh, what I was saying was that the traditional sales relies on a sales team uh, driven interactions where uh, the, the sales team would be, you know, generally going out and, uh, you know, physically meeting customers. Uh, but a SaaS product, uh, you know, led sales they also, you know, one of the key differentiating factors is they rely on a product-led sales model. That means there are there's a product which is online. You would have a very engaging website, uh, which is there. Uh, there's a free trial of that website, product, web-based product. A product-led sales versus a traditional uh, sales difference is that SaaS company would rely on the product to sell itself more. Okay, So there is a very important component where the, where the product uh, plays uh, 
uh, it is not just marketing or sales, but the, the product team also comes into the equation. So traditionally, it is marketing teams which generates the leads and sales teams which closes the lead right through the, the field sales method uh, primarily. But in a SaaS scenario, there is a third entity which comes into the mix, which is the product team. Because many a times the product is the first, you know, it's mostly a free trial product. It's a try and buy method. You would basically let the buyer decide because one of the things, you know, uh, we need to realize is that uh, in large enterprises, there used to be a difference between a buyer and a user. Uh, that means the buyer would be different and the people who would buy would be actually interacting with the traditional sales team and they would make the decisions and the users would be different. But today, uh, what has happened in the last five to 10 years is like we all do in our personal lives where we actually go and research online and then buy offline many times or research online and buy online, right? So that buyer behavior has changed and so has B2B buyer behavior changed. So people go, they research online about the products, there are many review websites like g2.com uh, you know you would, that's one of the most famous ones where you would go and and research about a business product okay what what, what is you know salesforce uh, you know what are the reviews of actual users of salesforce so you would actually go and research uh, even if you're a B2B buyer, you would go and research online. Okay, that's the first step that a B2B buyer does. And when they research online, they come across this product website because it's a SaaS product. So the website is there. It is full, fully, you know, uh, content uh, uh, heavy. Uh, they, they, it would explain to you about their, uh, you know, product in a very detailed manner. So the buyer actually also becomes very uh, familiar uh, with the product online through the product website. Okay, once the buyer has uh, uh, generated interest, then they would also go and actually do a free trial many a times. You know, you would have tried Canva, for example, right? There's a you would read about Canva, you would research about Canva, but then Canva allows you to use the product for free. Uh, there are certain products which are time bound, uh, so it's a premium model, uh, and uh, and such certain products which are, are not time bound and freemium, but you know only advanced features you have to pay for. So uh, there are the products, for example, in an SEO industry, there are products uh, like Ahref. Uh, which would say that, you know what, the entire product is free, but for seven days. And then you would buy. But what it does for the buyer, it allows you to do a try and buy, right? So that's, again, a major difference between traditional sales and, and, and a SaaS sale. So uh, as I said, the first thing is in the mix, in traditional, there is only marketing and sales. In in a SaaS sales or a, uh, in a model, it is a mix of product, marketing, and sales. And why? I've already explained to you because the, that is the buy, buyer journey. Uh, where the buyer likes to research online, do a try and buy, and then actually uh, make the real purchase decision. In this scenario that is developing for B2B products, it could be, by the way, a, a 10,000 rupees product per month. It could be a million dollar product. But uh, in million dollar products are today being purchased in this uh, methodology. So that is the difference between a trad traditional sales and, and, and a, a SaaS sale uh, method. Are there any questions at this stage? the pricing doesn't matter right because uh, you could say that uh, there is a SaaS product which doesn't do subscription pricing nobody can stop anybody on the pricing right we can say that okay mostly people follow subscription pricing uh, but uh, there there used to be a product i used to use on my ipad call as or you know i'm forgetting uh, the name uh, that product if for some reason they only charged me once and i've been using you know that i used to use that but the pricing it's a characteristic of SaaS that you know you know almost all SaaS products are subscription based. Uh, the what defines is uh, how do you basically sell? And what is the marketing and sales methodology? So uh, what what we have seen and you would see as we proceed, what is a SaaS business? Uh, part of which that SaaS business is inside sales and inbound marketing and these different functions and different methodologies that are there. So what are the characteristics of a SaaS business? Yes, subscription pricing is one of them. How the product or uh, you know is served to you is is another. How do you sell and market is another. What I would say is in traditional uh, business uh, and traditional marketing and sales, the method was that there's a marketing team which uh, through its own events and other methods would generate and uh, do a uh, you know advertising etc. Generate demand. Then that uh, then those leads would be passed on to sales team. Sales team there would be a typical structure. They would you know kind of reach out to them. Uh, and then they would do physical meetings. 
Uh, so what I'm trying to say is the pricing does not necessarily define. It is the entire sales and uh, marketing process which defines, you know, the traditional sales versus SaaS sales or product-led sales. Let's look at something very specific within SaaS sales, which is inside sales, right? Sales is the ability to convert a demand into business, right? That means there's a demand for your product or there is an interest in your product. That is marketing's job. Once the demand is captured, the sales team converts that demand into revenue. That means they, they close that uh, customer, that prospect, and uh, you know that prospect is turned into a customer. That is a sales job. Now the sales could be field sales or it could be remote sales. That means I'm basically saying that you know, even in a in a SaaS product, what prevents me to go and sell it that SaaS product to a customer doing field sales? Nothing. And by the way, there are many SaaS products which are sold by you know also going to the sales field by visiting customers. Many, many because they are like uh, you know very high ticket sales and you know there there is a complexity of sales involved. So there is no hard and fast tool, and that is what you know I was answering earlier that uh, the pricing doesn't def def you know necessarily define uh, this. So uh, similarly, it is not that all all SaaS sales are remote. No, in fact, there are many companies which have realized that to close very large accounts, it's a very large uh, uh, Fortune 500 company, a large enterprise. So they actually have field sales teams to sell their SaaS products. So if you talk about you know, large companies, I will co cover some of them like Freshworks and Zoho and others. They realize that, yes, they can do uh, SMB to mid-market, you know, completely, you know, remotely. But when, when you talk about large enterprises, they have to also do field sales to sell their products. Okay, so that that has been a realization for many of these uh, SaaS companies. So what I'm uh, trying to say is SaaS sales playbook doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have field sales. No, it could be there for certain segment of customers, but largely, largely SaaS sales playbook that I'm going to talk about today is product led, inside sales, and inbound marketing. Okay, that means you have to have a great product, by the way. It has to be a DIY product. So that's a given. You cannot not have a DIY product. Okay, as I said, why? Because the buyer journey is such. They want to kind of look at your product. They want to use the product by themselves. Uh, so the first requisite for a SaaS business is a DIY product, right? Web-based product is a technical part of it, but it, it should be a DIY product. That's the UI, UX, and the way the product is designed uh, and built. So DIY product. The second uh, important uh, prevalent characteristic is that there is inbound marketing. So we'll talk about that slightly later. I want to talk about inside sales first, okay? Because our session is around sales. So large, most of the companies cater to the SMB segment and the mid-market segment of customers through inside sales. I'm talking about largely the SaaS companies, okay? And when I say SaaS companies, I'm sure, you know, many of you have heard of Zoho and Freshworks and Chargebees. They are the iconic companies. And for some reason, uh, they started out of Chennai. Uh, most of them are based out of Chennai, but there are many companies out of Mumbai and Bangalore and other places as well, Pune. But uh, the, the big success, uh, so Chennai has become like the SaaS capital of India because of Zoho. So primarily Zoho started this, you know, uh, uh, 10 plus years back. Out of that, you know, uh, some employees left and then they, you know, started Freshworks and uh, out of that then Charge B and, you know, then it became an ecosystem and, and, and Chennai uh, became a center of uh, uh, SaaS and all these companies sitting out of Chennai, okay, they sold to the world. Okay, sitting out of Chennai. Okay, and then when they started catering those, when they captured the SMB and mid market fairly well, then they started going to large uh, enterprises. Then they created you know field sales teams in US and Europe and other markets. Okay, but till the time they were catering to SMB business and uh, and a part of a, a mid market business, they sold out of Chennai. Okay, so the SaaS sales playbook that I'm going to talk about today is primarily a learning from them. They were kind enough to, you know, share their insights and knowledge with others. And they created this SaaS sales book, uh, playbook through which other people learned that, okay, how sitting out of India, you can build a product. That product is then uh, kind of used by uh, everybody else in the world. Okay, not only used, but it is also sold. So build in India, sell from India and serve from India, okay? So the customer success teams, et cetera. So everything is in India, right? So the SMB market lends itself very well to this. Part of the mid market also lends itself very well to this. Only in the large enterprise uh, you know, segment, do you really need, need to have a physical presence, et cetera. Otherwise, this is a model 
perfected out of India and thanks to the Zoho uh, gang and uh, you know, Chennai companies. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, that is the background of this. Uh, I'm, I'm now going to talk about Insight Sales because as part of the uh, SaaS sales book, uh, playbook, Insight Sales is a very important function uh, apart from uh, inbound marketing. Okay, so inbound marketing I'll cover in the subsequent slides. Uh, let's discuss what is Insight Sales, right? So I think it's fairly clear. It, does, it doesn't need much elaboration that, you know, sitting, you know, from your office, instead of going physically, you do these sales tasks, right? So researching about your prospect, building a prospect database, connecting with your prospects, okay? All this is done, you know, sitting from the office, okay, without uh, physically uh, going and meeting the customers, okay? So this entire process, right, from researching to prospecting to connecting to meetings, everything is done remotely, okay? So it's also called as remote sales, not just inside sales, remote sales. Now, what does, what it do? Obviously, you know, uh, the, the kind of uh, cost, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, sales costs are reduced because you don't have travel costs. You don't have, you know, you can do multiple meetings in a day as a result because you're doing online. You can do, so there's a lot of, the, the cost of inside sales is much lower. Uh, and that is why it is very useful for startups and other companies and even large companies to do inside sales. But you have to have a process of inside sales, which we are going to discuss later in the, in the next uh, slides. Okay, so the inside sales is this, there's the definition of inside sales. Now let's look at this sales method, right? As I said, you have to have a method. So there's this playbook, this, this methodology that we're gonna talk about. So how do you structure inside sales? You know, what is inside sales? Okay, just people calling people up. So isn't that tele sales? Haven't B2C customers been doing a lot of tele sales, right? So how is this SaaS inside sales different from, uh, you know, tele callers that are there? So we'll see that, you know, and because what we are going to discuss today is primarily the SaaS sales method and which is applicable only, you know, largely to B2B, right? So we're not talking about tele callers doing B2C, et cetera. That's a very different process. So what is this B2B SaaS sales method? Okay, so now look at this typical, uh, you know, uh, map that I borrowed from the internet. This is, uh, I, I, li I like this particularly. So this is the life cycle. Okay, so uh, right from up, you know, you, there are two, you know, uh, things that you need to see. On top, you you would see that what happens, right? Customer become aware about your product. Then you have to educate them about your product. Then they, you know, go to the selection stage. And then once they become a customer, then there are the rest of the stages. They are onboarded as a customer. Okay, uh, that means you actually like welcome them into your, your organization and then you help them kind of, you know, get started with your product. Then they actually start using your product and you deliver impact uh, to them. And then you grow right through that customer. Either the customer gives you more business or they refer other 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 customers because they're happy with you. Okay, so that's really the, uh, the what happens with the customer. Uh, and the bottom you see uh, like prospect, MQL, SQL. These are your internal definitions, right? It, you start with a prospect. That means you have a prospect database. The prospect then becomes a marketing qualified lead. So what's a lead? The way I define very clearly, otherwise these are very confusing terms many times. Prospect is somebody whom you think could be interested in your, in your product. Okay, they, 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 they're just checking out sometimes you don't know, right? Uh, whether they are really interested or not interested. But once they express explicit interest, that means, you know what? I am interested in your product or service, then they become a lead. Okay, so that's the difference between a prospect and a lead. A lead is someone who has said, who has expressed explicit interest. That means, hey, I am interested. That means if I'm downloading your ebook from a website, I'm not told you that I'm interested in your product explicitly, right? It's implicit that I'm interested in your product, uh, so, but I would treat that as a prospect. Because they have not given you explicit interest. Hey, I'm interested in your product. Please get in touch with me. Okay, so when somebody does that, that becomes an NQL. And what is SQL? So till the time marketing treats it uh, the, as a lead, it is NQL. They qualify it and they say, hey, yeah, this person has expressed interest in our product or service. So they're NQL. Once the NQL is given to the sales team, and then they do their own round of qualification. You would have heard from other speakers, right? Band, et cetera. There are frameworks that sales team uses uh, to qualify that, yeah, yeah, out of those 10 leads that I got from marketing team, uh, only eight are really sales, uh, as, as per sales team, they are qualified, others two are not. So that is SQL. Then people commit, right? They say, I'm going to buy your product. They purchase the product. They pay, they pay for it. Then they go live with your product. And then there is MRR and LTV, which I'll cover later, you know, uh, what exactly are, are these? But if you see the process, 
Okay, this is what a typical process looks like online. The buying journey looks like they come to the website, they 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 read the content on the website, the prospects. Then uh, they then you educate them. That means what you actually uh, kind of uh, you know uh, uh, give them content uh, uh, around you know which is uh, which is let's say you know more about uh, details about the product that are there etc. And then it goes into selection stage. That means you are demoing to them. They are comparing you with other competitors. Then they are ne negotiating the pricing etc. Right. So that's the entire marketing and sales process. Once that is done, then the onboarding process starts in SaaS businesses. This onboarding is a very, very important uh, stage. Okay, the why? Because you're because it's a web-based product. Customers are supposed to use it DIY. So if you don't onboard them properly, okay, that that means you don't train them, you don't you know handle them. Uh, it could be done automatically uh, through you know software. It could be done by a customer success team. Okay, but to do a proper onboarding so that then they become power users because if they don't use the product, then they will not renew. And as you rightly said. SaaS is more about subscriptions and renewal, right? Because that is where you can get continual uh, revenue. That's a salient point. So if you don't onboard, the usage will not happen, which is the next step. And if you don't, if the usage doesn't happen, then, then the renewal doesn't happen. And therefore, there are no subscription fees, right? So that is what happens if you use Netflix and if you don't watch movies, I you know you after purchase for three months, the fourth month, you won't renew, won't renew because you'll say, hey, there's no usage. Why should I renew? So that is why... Uh, the renewal and the subscription revenues are dependent on proper onboarding, okay, either automated onboarding or customer success team driven onboarding. And then there is usage and adoption and then expansion, you know. Uh, so this is the life cycle typically SaaS companies, you know, follow. Any questions on this before we go to the next stage? <music>
Okay, so that is the basic part. Again, see, look at this. Otherwise, marketing involves traditional marketing involves doing paid advertising, you know, uh, reaching out to customers uh, through paid media, etc. Inbound marketing is primarily about content. Why? Again, it goes back to the same point. Customers today do research online. They do di buyers, you know, users and buyers are nearly the same. And, you know, as far as SaaS is concerned, the final signing authority may be different, but people who are researching online are the actually eventual users. So they are the people who are searching and researching, you know, about uh, what, what the problem statement is. Uh, and then they would found, find articles, blogs, videos uh, around their problem. Okay. You're not. So what is the difference between content marketing and marketing content? Marketing content tells who I am. This is what I am. This is my product. I'm good. Okay. Content marketing is about the customer. That means, hey, if you have this problem, then this is the solution. Okay. It is about helping the customer through your content. You're not selling. Okay. In that content, you are actually educating. You're telling the customer that, you know what, if you have a problem in so-and-so uh, category of uh, business, then this is what you should do. So you actually give them free, you know, advice, free content, uh, which helps them. Okay. That's the, the most important part. Uh, as part of that content, you also then obviously you can talk about your, how your product helps in that, etc. So the primary thing about content marketing is through all this, what you see on the, on the, on the, on the screen, on the right side, there are various ways to, you know, uh, 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 publish your content, etc. But what is common thing in that? is that it it basically is helping the user with the content it's not a sales content okay uh, and 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 this generates because people are searching online people are researching they would discover your content because they discover your content they they form a positive view about your brand uh, and because you help them understand something solve a problem right and then they you know you gain top of mind recall your brand becomes familiar uh, you you generate trust okay with your customers that uh, you know uh, because of all you know all the help that you have uh, given them and that is why then they become favorable to your brand and and then they uh, then they say hey acha i was searching for a good crm for uh, for uh, diamond industry now you uh, have a list which says you know what is the best uh, way to evaluate a crm for diamond industry and then they, then they would discover your website on which the content is there. They would check out your website. They, they, they see that oh, you also have a product in that uh, category. Then say, then there will be a uh, book a demo for your product or try your product you know, by signing up for a month for free, something of that sort, right? So that is the flow. Inbound marketing, content marketing, through that you generate leads and those leads are then passed to the sales process, which we'll cover later, right? So inbound marketing is, Again, very important, right? We talked about inside sales, uh, reducing the cost. Similarly, uh, inbound marketing reduces the cost, right? Because otherwise, when you do paid, et cetera, there are a lot of uh, costs involved. The cost of customer acquisition becomes very high. But when, when you're talking about inbound marketing, uh, the, the cost per lead is you know, comparatively very low. Uh, you know, as opposed to paid marketing. So again, you know, SaaS sales, because, you know, all these companies that I talked about, they were startups and they were challengers. So they didn't have a lot of money to burn. So they adopted this inbound marketing techniques to generate demand, to generate leads at a lower CAC. And then they used inside sales with again, a lower cost of sale, right? Uh, because it's an inside sales team to convert those uh, leads into, into customers. So again, the cost effectiveness of these methods of inbound marketing and inside sales uh, also should be noted. One of the most important thing, you know, that is uh, advised when we when we talk about uh, inbound marketing and, uh, and, and, and and inside sales uh, processes is to start with defining your ideal customer profile. Okay, it is called as ICP. Okay, and again, the SaaS companies kind of tend to do this. Okay, there is this ICP. Now, ICP again is a uh, you know common term. You should search for it. What you can see on screen, right? You start by creating a sample ICP you know uh, profile that, that you can see is something similar. You create different personas. If that is what suits your business, you would have different personas uh, in your business. But this this is a very very important exercise. Okay, when you do inbound marketing and when you do inside sales, please start by creating an ICP. Okay, this will lend a lot of clarity in you know in your marketing process and in your sales process because your content will be created around these 
your sales when people when they have uh, uh, sales uh, conversations they will basically uh, do this around uh, you know the icp or the personas right because they they know if this is the kind of persona then this should be my talking track for other personas my script should be different right so your sales and marketing process uh, need to start by creating an icp and personas uh, another important concept you know and i think this is my, my last slide on marketing is account based marketing uh, this is useful when your company has a product which is or a service which is targeted toward large customers okay that means named defined customers so uh, this is again a very important part of uh, saas marketing so you could say no my product is not for smbs it is not for small uh, to mid size companies but it is mid to large size companies and i have you know a universe of 200 companies that would buy my product then you would need something like account based marketing why because you on the right side you see right you identify target companies that means not everybody is your customer anybody who generates leads is not my customer but you have this 200 500 list of customers uh, that would be your target customers then because it's a limited set your inside sales team would start engaging them that means they would add them on linkedin then they would follow they will build a relationship with those customers because they know a lot about those customers because it's a defined set of customers and uh this is useful for account based marketing okay for large customers because uh, then now it feels right content marketing etc for uh inbound marketing for smb to mid uh and, and account based marketing from mid to large right so this helps you cover this entire uh spectrum of uh, marketing uh when we talk about saas companies now let's go to the process so what is this process okay the sales process that we are talking about which includes which starts with marketing so first is this who stage right uh, that that uh, that who is defined by icp and personas okay you you start with that so who does that basically internally to your organization to attract those uh, your prospects is your marketing team what does a marketing team do? do they do seo webinars pr you know this that and what is the kpi they are measured on this marketing team it is a mql right marketing qualified leads that they generate is that clear uh, that means the first step is to attract your prospects okay how do you attract by doing a webinar this is this is all if you look at it this is largely most of them are on the in, you know inbound marketing side when you do a webinar uh, pe people uh, would come and attract uh, you know join your webinar because you are talking about uh, uh, content uh, which is useful to them seo is anyway useful content Uh, pr uh, is uh, uh, maybe not useful content but social uh, content that you would post organic uh, leads that you would generate only paid is where the paid part comes in but this is the stage where you attract your prospects and the kpi to really bother there is the mql uh, then you would convert right who would convert your sales team would convert and close so convert to what convert to leads right so that is the second stage convert your prospect to leads uh, is the marketing job convert your mql to sql is is your sales team job okay uh, now there is this concept that is getting introduced here bdr okay business development uh, representative I'll, i'll i'll talk about that okay uh, that is also there in this subsequent, uh, subsequent slide uh, which is the team structure this is very important by the way when we talk about uh, saas sales method the real meat of the discussion is between these two slides if you if you if you understand this you would understand the difference between traditional sales and uh, the saas sales methodology so first stage is marketing we have discussed that what does marketing do but once marketing gives you prospects that these 100 people are have expressed explicit interest in our product that's a lead now there are two things here bdr or sdr okay i people some people call it sales development re representative some people call it business development representative so the the lead first goes to a bdr or an sdr this slide helps you understand a little better so inbound leads from marketing okay that's the starting stage who this leads goes to the sales development rep or i sdr or bdr those sdrs and bdr what do they do they qualify the lead that means somebody filled a form they came to your website they downloaded a pdf an ebook and and they filled a form now that's a lead and the marketing team would give that lead to the sdr the sdr would call them up email them call them have that initial conversation okay saying sir okay you know what what kind of organization is yours 
what is your interest okay so the little bit of band qualification would happen there the sales person might realize that hey you know what we are interested in mid market but this is a absolute startup so this is not really qualifying so then they will not qualify it but if they qualify that means this person seems to be interested they really have a immediate need the or the sales per, the, the lead could say no i downloaded your thing but you know what i'm not really looking to buy right now i'm just researching so then the sdr would put that in a different marketing funnel saying that let's nurture that lead over a period but <laughs> i would drop that lead right now that means you do not go beyond the sdr stage so a lead comes from marketing goes to sdr sdr does the initial conversation and qualification and if, if if the sdr qualifies that lead that yes this is a you know sales uh, lead that uh, you know that could convert they give it to what they call as account executives okay so there are two terms that you know are getting introduced sdr and ae okay a is the account executive that means marketing team gives the lead to sdr sdr does the initial qualification and conversation and then gives it to the ae person okay the account executive what does that person do that person gives a demo they have a deeper conversation they do quoting quote, uh, quoting and pricing this that and they close okay so the 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 closure job is of account executive and once the closure happens it goes to the customer success team right so this is what you have to understand the first step is marketing team second step is sdr third step is ae and fourth step is customer success team this is what you see here also okay convert so a marketing team that is attract convert which is the sdr or bdr close which is the account executive's job and activate which is the customer success team job correct this is the saas sales methodology okay now we are going to spend a little time on this two slides because this is something that needs to be understood see you have to understand that the the first level of sdr is not where the conversion happens sdr only thing it do, they do is they actually help uh, qualify in from a sales point of view the conversion happens at the account executive level in a in a saas sales uh, you know playbook method the account executive's job actually the core strength of an account executive is to close okay that means how you know they know all the sales they are hardcore sales people by the way sdr are also hardcore sales people but even the account executives are supposed to be you know sales you know very good at sales why because they like to have a conversation with people they develop the relationship with those people even though remotely they understand the problem statement they kind of help do the demo and you know the selling the salient points you know of their product or service uh, uh you, uh, you know uh, so it's almost like solution selling okay uh, where you actually uh, don't just say this is my product this is the pricing please buy no the account executive's job is to convince the customer that you know for their problems company's product is the best uh, solution for their problems and when you talk about challenging sales etc right see sales the, the there are two parts to sales okay gaining trust and providing a solution okay then actual all the commercial discussions you know are easy if you gain trust of the customer that means what you know that the that the sales person is really acting in the interest of the buyer so the sales person should be kind of you know ready to uh, be able to uh, tell it doesn't suit you you should try this out so it is almost that the sales person first has to gain the trust of the customer because there is no trust i won't buy from you how a great your product is however good you are if i don't trust you okay so the the first job of a sales person is to gain trust because all other conversations are dependent on that if you first you gain trust how do you gain trust by where the customer knows that you are acting in their best interest okay you are not just trying to kind of convert them you know through any means overcharge them no so first is gaining trust second is providing a solution to the problem see this uh, this always happens in sales there are certain people who are only interested in price because they have done all the other research they have only come to your website they will ask for your price but you as a sales person you need to understand the background you need to know a little bit more about the customer before giving a price because the price might be too less or too high 
because you've not understood what exactly the customer wants. So it is absolutely fine to kind of ask them a little detail, which will help you decide the pricing. Okay. Uh, uh, people ghost. That is absolutely, you know, common. There's nothing uh, new in this. You need to have a proper SaaS sales playbook. That means if a person goes, if it, even if they don't go, they tell you, sorry, I'm not interested right now. I'm interested later. There would be many dispositions as they are called. Okay. You need to put those people into the right buckets so that marketing can happen to them. That means your sales has given up on them right now because that either the person has ghosted or said no or said, you know, later. But marketing team can continue to nurture them, right? Until unless they sign out of your marketing uh, communication, they unsubscribe. Uh, so all I would suggest is there's nothing wrong. You did not do anything wrong. You need a little background before giving pricing. That is absolutely fine. Uh, my suggestion here is to talk to your marketing team and create buckets and journeys so that these people who uh, drop in some or the other manner, they are put into the right marketing journeys. One thing you need to understand, and I just tell this to all salespeople on LinkedIn or other social media. People are on social media to connect. That means the job of social media is to connect people. So now what you need to do is the sales cycles are longer, but you need to establish a relationship. Comment on their posts, like their posts, ask questions generally, not, not in a you know manner where you fake it. Okay. Genuinely engage with them. Relationship like that. Don't try to say that, you know, what they said, hi, and then you next immediately you pitch to them and then they, they would not reply, right? Because they're not there to be sold to, right? Everybody is coming to add to everyone to just sell. Try to build a relationship. Okay. okay. The, and, and, and give it some time. Uh, have Once you have a relationship, some sort of a relationship in place uh, where you try to gain some trust, then you can uh, sell. Otherwise, most of them will not respond because they just feel that you have to connect with me just because you wanted to sell. They are salespeople by the way. SDR is a salesperson. But what you see on the screen, BDR. That SDR, BDR is a salesperson. Account executive is a salesperson. It is just that in the SaaS sales methodology, they are called as SDRs and AE because there is a certain way SDRs are trained. You, you can research on internet because we don't have that much time. Uh, but SDR, training SDR is a, the role of an SDR, the KRAs, KPIs of SDRs, the training of SDRs is different. Account executive role, training, KPIs are different. Okay. Both are salespeople. It is just that in the sales playbook, uh, SaaS playbook, uh, they are called as account executives. It applies to uh, SaaS also. But uh, please remember, I told two methods in the beginning. One is field sales and the other is in inside sales. So if you are, for example, selling to large customers, there are two things. Again, I've covered that. That one method is account-based marketing. So you actually have accounts. And instead of relying only on references, uh, references are there and you would still do SaaS sales through references. Absolutely fine. It's just a way of generating leads. But another way, which is more prevalent, if you don't have references, you can't rely on references alone. So you do something proactive, which is called as account-based marketing, which means you have 100 named accounts. You uh, figure out those companies, employees, which are the right employees for you, uh, whichever department you are targeting. Then you build a relationship. What I was asking, uh, what I was answering earlier uh, to, I think, Rajiv, was you go, that market storming equivalent is, online is you go, if there is webinars, you join webinars with them. You ask if there are WhatsApp groups, you join WhatsApp groups of those people. If there are Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, you be part of that. You just try to build a relationship where, wherever your customers are present. That is an, an inside sales uh, method of market storming. Field sales method of market storming in SaaS sales is events. There are a lot of events that these people have, you know, attend offline, whether it's a Gartner event or other any other industry event uh, that is there. You go there. I strongly recommend if you are, if you are doing enterprise uh, sales, then either you do ABM, okay, not either. You do ABM for sure. And you also attend events where you have face time with the customers. You actually go, that is the equivalent of market storming in, you know, this uh, technology and SaaS uh, 
equivalent of references are everywhere there is nothing as i told you if somebody refers uh, to you right uh, uh, in the, in my subsequent slides i think we are already out of time but uh, i'll just uh, tell you something from my subsequent uh, slide yeah this one right the saas tools see saas sales teams are you know they have like zoos and of the world and all they have perfected this tools okay so they just don't rely on emailing and calling even for emailing there are tools okay so do is you need to start using some of these tools in a, a very you know structured way so uh, uh, for even for reference management even for kind of you know reaching out to your references you might reach out to your references through an email saying hey we referred to you and that you know uh, uh, we we gave your reference and said that you know you uh, you have a certain need around this and if it, if it starts a conversation it's a, like any other way there's no separate thing for saas sales okay uh, but uh, suppose it's a weak reference suppose you know the person uh, doesn't really engage with you at that time what do you do now in saas sales there people have actually uh, given uh, a lot of importance to using tools why because you're dealing with everybody in a remote way right i've told you mostly i'm going to talk about remote sales inside sales uh, uh, because that is what is relevant for most of our, you know most of you some people some of you may be selling to large enterprises but this tools what you see are data enrichment tools right in if you go to lusha or zoom info you can put in my name you may know virchand bothra of 0101 today i need to kind of he could be a prospect uh, he could be a customer for me but i don't have any contact details a you would use a sales intelligence tool like sales insight sales uh, like linkedin sales navigator very very popular tool okay or and you could connect with me on linkedin and all but if you want to call me if you want to email me then what will you do then there are tools which enrich that data lusha zoom info they would give you contact details of their business is that so there are data enrichment tools then there are sales intelligence tools okay like sales uh, linkedin sales navigator etc then there are sales automation tools very important category what it does is you have 100 prospects whom would you remember then i need to send the case study first because either tool you have to be useful right you have to understand the value of content marketing then you have to have follow ups that you know i need to follow up till that guy so there's a sales cadence okay that once a lead comes in i try to there's a journey that you build first send an email then wait for two days then send another email then wait for five days if the person doesn't respond then send that person a case study okay pdf all this you have to automate because there are 100 prospects if you are good at it you can do it manually but you can't so there are tools sales automation tools like outreach etc which have been created to help you uh, put together that sales cadence in a automated way and then there are crms which are different you know from sales forces of the world uh, for inbound marketing there's a excellent tool which is uh, you know free to a good extent which is upspot then there are pipe drives if you have a large base of customers that you are targeting so this 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 great saas sales to, uh, you know tool kit that is there and most of these companies they who do you know saas sales use uh, many of these tools are not uh, it is very prevalent in the industry so the i i think i have answered the reference question that it's not really references question that i don't think that's really different here and there's no something and i don't think any there is anything specific in the saas uh, sales method around references they have to be dealt in any other way but i would use these tools to kind of Uh, reach out to those uh, references only thing i would do is if somebody is given a reference of somebody there is a uh, personal connect i would reach out to those people on linkedin you know uh, that is what my business is most of my prospects and customers are available on linkedin so in addition to emailing whatsapping i would also re- reach out to them on linkedin uh, and uh, i i kind of create this multi uh, connect touch points i would start interacting with them on their linkedin on their posts etc the earlier answer i gave you should build a relationship uh, is is what my uh, uh, only comment here is okay right. in the interest of yeah. time i will just yeah uh, just just um, just a minute so uh, thanks a lot for the detailed answer and i feel that this is some totally other universe of sales uh, coming from traditional sales background would you have some recommendations uh, for any go to blogs any resources for saas sales oh yes yes i will i will give that okay i will okay, great, uh, thank you yeah very good material by the way all these people who have, you know contributed to the saas sales book the chennai guys and uh, world over also they are very kind they are very you know uh, uh, they have this spirit of giving 
you'd find ex- excellent content you know uh, online uh, around these no dearth of that you you pro- you produce content and rajesh what i understand is you are saying i'm i'm writing something up i'm having a blog my point is if your icp is clear based on the icp's pain points etc you you should create content okay those content should be done in such a way through inbound marketing you should read a book around inbound marketing around you know content marketing then you'll realize that the keywords that you are using in the content are not the ones that your people are searching so there are two ways first go to places forums where your prospects are spending time second write content in using those keywords which your prospects are searching so do keyword research okay uh, read about what you know how seo works <laughs> read about in- inbound marketing but these are all connected these are not silos huh? please understand all these things very clearly if based on your icp you would figure out what those people are interested in based on that you will figure out what are they searching where are they spending time which forums are they doing once you have all those clears don't start immediately by writing something and posting something and then you will realize yeah why, why are people not responding because you know they are not interested in those topics they are not really searching for those topics so that is why you may not be getting a response i can give you just a generic answer right now i hope it is useful in some way fine sir fine thank you sir okay so uh yeah this i i don't think we have uh, time for this but uh, these are different metrics by the way uh so uh, uh th- these are invented by the saas companies okay the globally mrr okay new mrr expansion mrr like mrr is your monthly recurring revenue somebody mentioned right in the beginning right that one of the defining things is subscription subscription is what it repeats it every month every quarter or every year you would have the uh, revenue so, so if your revenue is monthly recurring that is called monthly recurring revenue uh, uh, otherwise it is arr okay but monthly recurring revenue new mrr is how much the new subscription revenue did you gain in a month expansion mrr is from existing customers what more revenue were you able to gain and there are so many of them you know like one of but one of the most important thing is acv annual contract value it is like you know in a year you know my contract with so and so customer gives me so much revenue okay you may not have realized that revenue but it is just saying that this contract means that i will earn a million dollar from this customer in this year okay that is acv second thing very important you know is read about clv so first for clv you have to define the lifetime of the customer that on an average a customer spends 3 years with me so that's the lifetime and then in that 3 years what is the overall lifetime value that you will gain out of that customer that is customer because that allows you this if you see this last but second clv cac ratio that if you have a high clv then you can high, have a higher cac okay because you cannot have a cac is that customer acquisition cost cost of acquisition you cannot have a high uh, cac but very you know low clv you may not and then there is cac pay, payback period that means you acquired a customer for 10000 rupees for the first 3 months you would just recover the cac and then the fourth month onwards that you know you would start getting surplus uh, revenue and uh, and then over a lifetime i will get so much revenue that is clv so these are very important things by the way these are your modern ways of measurement please read about all of these things you know and and try to understand you know uh, what uh, what these metrics are yes navin uh hi just a quick question uh, as we discussed that uh, reaching like uh, reaching a uh, saas sales is basing about reaching through emails content marketing and all of this stuff so i was curious that business writing as it extends how should we form our content how should we uh, you know uh, better our business writing skills for that no there are two different questions how you should skills is a very personal thing that how do you get better at this right and the other mm-hmm. is how to create more compelling content more con- you know in- content which your customers are interested in these are two different questions which one are you talking about uh 
I'm talking about basically. See, uh, when we reach out on LinkedIn, when we uh, uh, draft our emails for that purpose, only on the reaching out purpose. That okay. sort of business writing skills I'm talking about. How to you know? Uh, see, uh, prospecting them. is different, by the way. Uh, so, see, content writing skills are very different, Navin. Mm-hmm. Content writing skills means what you you want me to r- read your content, which is which will take me ten minutes of my life. Mm-hmm. So if you want mm-hmm. me to read your content for which I have to give ten minutes of my life, that it should be useful for me, right? That is about content. That whatever content you are creating, okay? You mm-hmm. created a video, you created an infographic, you created a blog, whatever it may be. But if you want to spend my life's ten minutes on that content, it better be useful to me. You can't mm-hmm. just sell to me, you know, just keep describing your product features. No, that is the content marketing part. When you are reaching out to customers on LinkedIn, etc., that is more of a prospecting skill. Okay, that's mm-hmm. not content skill. That is prospecting. Okay. How do I reach out to Veer or LinkedIn? So you would place a LinkedIn request. Many senior people today don't accept LinkedIn request if you don't put a note along with it, saying that why would you like to connect. Then a lot of people make this mistake of putting cut and paste. Everybody, I found your uh, profile to be very interesting, and you know, I think we can uh, have some mutual interest, and uh, that, that's it. You don't, you think that people don't realize that this is a cut and paste? They would, they realize that. But if you spend that time, two minutes of some, or looking at my past post, my past experience uh, on LinkedIn, and then you put one custom customized sentence in that i i i will note that you know you took the trouble and interest to write something which was uh, customized and then i'll accept okay similarly if you re, re, you know message if you comment on my post what i was telling uh, the earlier participant also nobody comes on linkedin to be sold to people come on linkedin or facebook or instagram to connect with other human beings and that connect could be at a superficial level at a d- deeper level so try and gain that in a genuine way try to comment try to like try to engage those people will notice so it takes time there is no shortcut right so imagine yourself the way i tell people by the way when you think about social media na think about your community uh, gathering somebody you know you gathered at a place either in a, your building society for you know 15th august or rakhi Uh, function or you know some celebration, Ganpati celebration, or you have uh, you are meeting people in a social gathering at a wedding or some uh, function. Somebody just pulls out his business card and say, "Hey, I am this, and we sell this." Wouldn't it look odd that hey, this is a social setting? Why are you just you know kind of uh, d- uh, selling to me right now? Think about social media also like that. People are there on social media doesn't mean that you just keep you know kind of awkwardly selling to them. You just establish a connect. if possible establish a relationship and then kind of reach out to them and say that you know give it some time don't be in, you know hurry to kind of because most of those hurried you know sales uh, uh, reach outs don't work you kind of have to kind of you know give it some time and then i think it works that is my belief we had a very good interactive session i i i like these kind of sessions where you know the speaker also gets feedback questions you could be critical of what i'm saying you don't have to always uh, kind of you know accept whatever i have said so it's good to have this kind of counter questions and uh, interactions uh, i i also kind of enjoyed this session a lot i hope this has been useful uh, there is a big contrast between how this saas companies have grown uh, whether it is indian saas companies uh, or other you know uh, saas companies across the world they've really evolved this saas sales uh, playbook and overall saas business uh, methodology uh, and anybody who is interested in this uh, sales as a career should uh, read more about this i've used industry terms so hopefully you can go uh, online and research more about uh, see there are uh, multiple tools uh, and the answer again uh, is basically are you a small company large company what, what kind of database you have so i'll give you a few popular ones which are there there are indian tools okay uh, which are fell for little mid to large companies like netcore or or uh, you know uh, there are international tools like sendgrid if you want apis okay if you want to send transactional emails there is uh, uh, sendgrid 
Uh, then there, if you want to send promotional emails, there is Mailchimp. Okay, uh, Indian tools uh, which are automation related are uh, is Netcore, which is uh, email uh, you know very popular for email. Uh, but there are multiple other tools online, Active Contact, etc. You know, you you again based on the kind of need that you have, uh, there are various categories. But just start with the likes of uh, SendGrid, Mailchimp, or Netcore, and then if you do online research, you'll find their alternatives. Go to Google and say alternative to SendGrid. Alternative to Mailchimp, alternative to uh, Netcore. You'll find the rest of them, you know, there. 